The third lesson in dynamics is about free body diagrams. We will often be examining objects that have multiple forces acting upon them. In these cases, we will draw free body diagrams, or FBDs. These are used to visualize and organize the information you know about the forces acting upon an object, or a body. There are some rules to how we draw these. First of all, every object is portrayed as a square or a rectangle. This is a diagram, not a drawing. Second, if the object is on a surface or an incline, you have to include that in your diagram, much like in the example above. Third, forces are vectors, and vectors are represented by arrows. These vectors, these arrows, should begin on the object or at its center and point away in the direction of the force. All vectors must be labeled. We have to know which is which. Finally, only draw forces on an FBD. Do not include acceleration vectors or velocity vectors. Let's take a look at an example. During a tug-of-war, a 10 kilogram rope is pulled left with a force of 50 newtons by team A and pulled right with a force of 80 newtons by team B. What is the acceleration of the rope? Well, step one is to draw the object. This doesn't look very much like a rope, but that's okay. This is a diagram, not a drawing. You'll see that oftentimes we write the mass of the object inside the box. The second step is to draw and label all the forces acting on the object. In this case, we have two. The force of team A to the left and the force of team B to the right. These forces will always be labeled F, but they will have different subscripts. Sometimes they have specific subscripts that we will always use. Other times you can make up your own. In this case, A and B. Step three is to label the magnitude of the forces if and when we know them. In this case, we know what both forces are from the very beginning, 50 newtons and 80 newtons. Other times, you'll calculate one of these forces as some future step of a problem, and when you do, you should add that magnitude to your diagram. And finally, we should use Newton's second law to finish the problem. Newton's second law tells us that A equals F net over M. The net force, which we haven't really talked about before, is either the difference between two forces that are in opposite directions, or the sum of two forces that are in the same direction. In this case, F net is 80 newtons minus 50 newtons, and we put that over the 10 kilogram mass. When we finish this calculation, we find that the acceleration of this rope is 3 meters per second squared. Since that is a positive answer, that means that the acceleration is in the direction of the force from team B. Let's take a look at an example of an object on a surface. A 5 kilogram crate on a frictionless surface is pulled to the right with a force of 25 newtons. What is the acceleration of the crate? Well, step one, draw the object. And then in this case, it's on a surface, so we'll draw a line to represent that. Step two is to draw and label the forces. Well, there's an applied force to the right. This is an abbreviation you'll see many times. We use a lowercase a to abbreviate applied force. This just means any old force that someone or something happens to be exerting on an object. The force that we left off of the previous example, but that I want to include here, is the force of gravity. We're going to assume that any object is on Earth unless otherwise stated, in which case this object is feeling a force downward toward the center of the Earth. Step three is to label the magnitude of the forces if and when we know them. Well, we know that the applied force is 25 newtons, and if we do a little calculation on the side, we can find that the weight of this object is 49 newtons. The final step is to use Newton's second law to finish the problem. We have A equals F net over M, and in this case, horizontally, we only have one force, the applied force. So I guess we could write 25 newtons minus zero newtons. If we finish this calculation, we find that the acceleration of this crate is five meters per second squared. What about the vertical forces involved in this problem, or the vertical motion? Well, this object is on the surface and is being dragged to the right. It doesn't have any vertical motion. It's not accelerating up or down. 
Let's take a look at what we find if we apply Newton's second law to the vertical forces and motion of this object. So we know the acceleration is zero, and we have a force down of 49 newtons and up of zero newtons. But something doesn't look quite right here. This equation doesn't work out. Uh, what's, what's going on? Well, it turns out that we're missing a force. According to Newton's third law, if the weight of the crate is pushing down onto the surface, then the surface must be exerting a force upward on the crate. We call this the normal force. The normal force is a reaction force that's exerted by a surface, and it's, direct, and it's directed perpendicular to the surface. Let's look at Newton's second law again with the normal force in mind. We know that this object is still not accelerating up or down. So we can still plug in zero for the acceleration. If we cross multiply and then solve for Fn, we find that the normal force in this case is equal to 49 newtons, just like the weight. That's not a coincidence. Again, Newton's third law should tell us that the forces between the crate and the surface are equal in magnitude, in this case 49 newtons, but directed in opposite directions. For any object on a horizontal surface, the normal force is going to be equal to the weight. And that's it for this lesson. There's no summary this time.